Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Plank and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back and relax, and let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark! Hiya, Bobby. You want to go for a ride? Sure, Jay. Jump in. In the body of a girl, life in it's fantastic, you can brush the hair up with me everyone to tell. Imagination, life is your creation. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. In the body of a you can brush me. Imagination, life is your creation. I'm a blessing from the all my tall rock and roll feel the glamour and thank kiss me here touch me there thank you thank you hello and welcome to the black and south show episode number four 70 and i just learned that spotify's web browser has a brand new feature that i didn't know about until just now so i had to fix that oh but let me bring on my i'm blake let me bring on my co-host first of all a man who is too good for threads the biggest thing on podcasting Sal, <laughs> how you doing <laughs> um yeah i'm just I'm, I'm waiting to see how things go because <laughs> if it's going to be not a big deal i'm not going to bother I'm just saying, I'll talk about it a bit. Let's bring on our other man, the man who today apparently they got himself a brand new PlayStation, literally right before I come. Yeah, the new PlayStation sitting on the table. The man, the Midlands on wrestling historian, Mark Dad. How you doing? Fantastic. I'd be doing better if I can get my PlayStation Four Pro to connect to the internet, and keep keep saying that it's timed out. What a shock. You're having internet problems in your room. What a big surprise. <laughs> why am I not shocked by this sentiment? This, that's why they call it the dead zone. Well, funny part is, um, just for record, okay, normally I'm upstairs doing the show, so we would not actually tell the next room over. But it is so fucking hot upstairs right now that the fan upstairs in the office and our, in our, we do our workouts is not going to be enough to get through an hour. So I'm like, no, I'm doing it downstairs today. <laughs> I'm not doing it upstairs today. It's not happening. Or the air conditioning is better. Well, the air conditioning is better. The yeah, it, the office is weird, and sometimes it's nice. Like yesterday was perfect. Today, not so much. So, um, where's the router in your house in the living room? We have two yes. routers. There's the router in the living room and an extender in the kitchen right by dad's room. Yep. Oh, that is still not working. Yep. There you go. Nope. Well, funny part okay. he's doing the show. <laughs> he's doing the show with no problem. That's the funny part. Well, <laughs> so that's that, that's loose right there. Right here. Whoa. Okay, no, no, no. I'm gonna get you the song here. I, I couldn't help myself. And I was trying to realize, like, oh, wait, the Barbie movie comes out this weekend. We should open with Barbie Girl by Aqua. Like, I had different songs set up, too. I'm like, no, no, it's, it's that weekend. We might, we might have another opportunity to pull this off. As Sal so, took the past, you got to take the opportunity when you get it. So I took it. <laughs> okay, so I have this burning question. Yes, it's in the movie. Do, There's a topical cream for that. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't give me a fun deal already. And, and also penicillin. Is that it? Yeah. Uh no, my question is what is threads? It is it is, it is Instagram it is Meta's version to Twitter. Right. And I hear <laughs> Elon Musk is having a conniption fit. Anyway, anyway, good to do. <laughs> um do they expect, and I mean they the studio to make have a shitload a, of money this weekend? Yes. Yeah, on Barbie. Yes. A hundred percent with it's everywhere. You don't I understand mean, that this movie is going to be so fucking big this weekend, it's not even funny. I'm so I'm, I'll stay here. I'm not seeing it this weekend. I will see it though when it comes out streaming. I am looking. I was I gonna say movie. I had zero intentions from the day they announced it years ago, uh-huh. and I was like, okay. And now I'm just like, oh my god, let's go see Barbie. <laughs> I know it's weird. I were here, like I, I have no interest in this movie, but now I, I really have to see it. Like, I I have really, to see it. The, the trailers that they've been showing, especially the trailers, are amazing. Where, where she <laughs> takes off her her high heels and 
She's in flat feet, and all of a sudden, all her gang is going, she's got flat feet. What the hell? Oh, my God. It's such a clusterfuck. It's going to be such a clusterfuck, and I can't. I, I have to watch it. Like, it's going to be so dumb. Oh, are all her pals gonna be there, like her cousin Skipper? I know nothing. I, I literally know. Literally, and... that that you literally said more about Barbie than I know. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I am a guy. I know nothing about Barbie. My <laughs> sister play with it, but I know nothing. Like I literally know nothing. <laughs> Besides her Malibu mansion, is that yeah, it? Except for the jokes and the obvious stuff everybody knows, I don't know anything. So like, <laughs> this is one of those situations where it's a massive thing, but it's so feminine that I know not much about it at all. So, so <laughs> in the movie, do we know is she the CEO of her own company or is she the president of the United States? <laughs> no, I think she's the astronaut in this one. God, I, I, wish, I wish I had like a. I really should really have like a room. I thought that was Ryan Gosling that was the astronaut. No, nobody cares about <laughs> Ken. There's, all, there's a whole song number about it. There's a whole song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see from the uh, trailer that Ryan Gosling does look very plastic. <laughs> wait, 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 we're it's fantastic. About... <laughs> there it is. There it is. Okay. So I joked about it at the top here. Um, so for those wondering, yes, we are the, the Blake and Style show with Mark is now on threads. I did open an account immediately. Um, but when I found out about it, I opened up my account, I opened up Blake and Style show account. Uh, okay. And the Nikki and Mandy show also has one. Um, this picture, everything was covered. I, I we also have accounts in other places that I don't use, but uh, that's uh, kind of sunk. So, like, I understand what Sal's saying when it comes to social media issues right now. The one thing I will say about Threads, it is so much more relaxed over there. Is it, it is so calm? It is so chill. Um, it's like the beginning of Twitter before I turn into a clusterfuck. Mm-hmm. It's so chill over there. Like, I love it over there right now. It's the Wild Wild West, but also like a real parallel universe over there, too. Like, it's really weird. So, like, I've been so, talking about it with some AKO friends that it's like a parallel universe over there. So when you post <laughs> when you uh, post the comment, it's not getting scrutinized? No, it's, it, 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 there's no hate right now. I mean, it'll probably change. You know how things work. But yeah, for now, I mean, it's yeah, nice we're in a honeymoon place. phase right now. So. It's a nice, calm little place over there. You know what Good. I mean? Good. You know? So yeah, I will say that we are over there. I haven't put any clips over there, and but for it's a little while, we will be going back to them on comments from TikTok and YouTube. And there hasn't been a thread yet. No one's been an asshole on thread yet, so I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> well, now you said it. Well, I'm waiting for it because it makes it gives us content. You be an asshole to us, it gives us content. <laughs> like that guy that made the comment that I'm living in my mom's basement. Oh, trust me, we have some comments. We'll get there in a minute. We'll get there. Let's start the show. I hope support the show. Find all the you can find the show, including threads. And it'll probably work out. Yeah, the Blake and Sal Show com. Sal. Yeah, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, um, sleep aid, weird light things that project on your ceiling that didn't work anymore <laughs> on our. T- from our T Public link, or go to our website and click uh, T Public. Uh, I just read that, or go to T Public and search for Blake and Sal Show. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> okay. Hey, do we have our Blake and Sal Show with Mark digital clocks in yet? No, and why would you need that? <laughs> you have phones. Why would you need that? Or you can buy <laughs> a one from the dollar store and put because a sticker you want to be on time to hear. Hey, our show. Two things. First of all, not only am I back to this guy had a digital clock in his room. The last time we had a power outage, he never reset it. It's been blinking for months. <laughs> it's been blinking for months. Well, it's not blinking anymore. Does it have a little battery in it? But here's the funny part is, he doesn't use it because, number one, we all have phones. Number two, the Google, the Google, here, the Google um, home in the room that has alarms on it. So you can say, hey, <laughs> Set an alarm for like six thirty. Watch it did that by the way. Because the next door, watch it did that. It'd be very funny. <laughs> and it'll go off for him in the morning when he's got to pick Kyle up for work. So it's not like he doesn't have an alarm in his room. <laughs> We're like upstairs. I need my alarm clock. I have an old school alarm clock. I need that because it's the only thing that wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> the only thing. <laughs> Between Siri and Google, the alarms go off. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, hey. What's good, break? We'll come right back. As always, go pick up Mandy's book. Available. I know I am available on Amazon Barnes and Noble Publishing, and uh, is in English and in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. ran over to get his copy and just show it on the screen. Uh, the background not damn working. It. Damn it! It's not working. <laughs> okay. Yeah, why? Change, change, change virtual. Change your virtual background first. That's amazing. If I move it fast yeah. enough, you can get glimpses of it. <laughs> um, and also, um, last Friday there was a brand new episode of the Needing the Mandy show. It looks like we're. It looks like the show is probably going to go monthly. 
just because of scheduling and other nonsense. But it's still, it was a really good show last week. Oh, there it is. There's the book. There's I know I am on the YouTube side. You can see the book. There you go. <laughs> Don't pick that and up. And if you're lucky, you might get an autographed copy. Ooh. Wait, where is it now? There's the info. It should be the front somewhere. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen the autograph one. Right there. Right there. there it is. Hey. Right there. I feel like I should put this video on the YouTube page of the promotion. <laughs> Why not? And threads. And on threads. Yeah, definitely on threads. Okay, I have to know. I should open the I know I am in, on thread. I haven't done that yet. I really should. I haven't done that yet. No, I've there you go. been so busy since we got back on vacation that I haven't had a chance to do a lot of things. You know? So, all right. Well, anyway, let's do this. So, um, we have a lot to talk about here in the Lakers South Show history this week in history. We are going from the 15th to the 21st, which is doesn't seem like a lot of time. But it really is a lot. Um, so it was funny. I'm starting to get alerts on my, on my like on my Facebook memories that mm-hmm. a year ago. Because Fan Expo Chicago is in August this year, so that's why we haven't talked about it. And number one, we don't have a panel right now. We don't even, we're not doing a panel this year because I haven't gotten alerts, and I don't think we're doing a panel this year. But oh no, yeah, whatever. We're not, doing, we're not doing a panel. Moment. Well, unless something gets back to me between now and beginning of August, we're not doing a panel this year. Okay. Um, but anyway, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not really stressed about it. As long as we have our press passes, I'm not really stressed about it. But anyway, um, a year ago, on July 15th, we did do two live shows at Fan Expo Chicago. I guess if we're going to go out, we had a couple of really good shows last year. Um, the Puck the Polish I Know I Am panel and the Blake South Show Live, which was a lot of fun. We did those two. Uh, ironically, the I Know I Am panel had more people in it than ours, but whatever. Who cares? We were not on the stage, we were promised, but that's a whole different story for another time. Go back to our, go back to last year's um, At the Con special to hear us vent about that. Um, <laughs> and then um, interviews, as far as interviews concerned, um, July 16, 2014. This is actually a big deal interview. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'll explain. There's two reasons. Number one, it is also, it is Tommaso Ciampa. Yes. But also, it goes down as my first ever celeb- I mean, first ever solo celebrity interview. Yep. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yep. First ever solo by myself celebrity interview. So there you go. That's pretty Home cool. Tomboy does good. And also, um, my one of my worst interviews of all time. Um, July 15, 2015 with Johnny Mundo, now known as Johnny TV, Johnny, Johnny Game Changer, Johnny Kiss My Ass, whatever the hell he is today. Johnny <laughs> asshole. <laughs> One of my worst interviews ever. I I'm sorry. That was I hated that interview. Came out terrible. I posted it up. I edited it around. It was bad. It was a bad interview. Um, and it wasn't my fault. It was he just wouldn't answer questions. And then um, um, Mister, I'm now in, I'm now going into the um, pro wrestling hall of fame of Waterloo, Iowa. Conrad Thompson was on the show on July twentieth, twenty eighteen, to talk about the first star cast. And by the way, that's not a joke. He really is going into the Waterloo Hall of Fame uh, pro wrestling. That's not oh. a death joke either. That legitimately. Okay. Broke yesterday, so that's okay. why some of the news stories we're not covering today. What they did announce the Waterloo Iowa Hall of Fame. There's just a lot of people on there, and, and you know what? Me, 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 and Dad do a special about it when we get closer. There's a lot of things I don't know them, but Dad probably does. So we'll probably do a special about it when we get closer. So anyway, um, that is that. So before we get into the wrestling stuff, a couple of things I want to hit. First of all. We joked about it, but we do have more TikToks and YouTube comments, and none of them are good. <laughs> which I love. Yeah. Which I love. First of all, um, Forbidden Door. We were talking about MJF Tanahashi, and Dad threw out some pick. I forgot what he said. I think I think Tanahashi won the title or whatever the hell Dad said. I don't remember anymore. It didn't. But not really important to what he said. But the comment on, t- but the comment I got on, um, this is TikTok. Yeah, this is TikTok. Was your your all idiots? Not spelled right. It's Y O U R. All idiots. <laughs> That's because that guy, what's his name? Blatsky? Blatsky. <laughs> He's Blitzky and he lives in his mother's basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Um, so the next clip, the next one has a couple of comments from YouTube and from TikTok. And I kind of forgot what was said and I had to go find it because apparently it's important to the comments that were made. <laughs> okay. So I had to go find it. And this is a clip. This is of Sal. Right before Money in the Bank. Um, if Liv Morgan beats up Ronda Rousey again and Shayna Baszler again, <laughs> I'm going to f- smash my head through a window because that is so not believable. 
I, I'm writing down time codes. Um, <laughs> okay. Remember, so, this, is, this is being recorded, so we're going to... I don't know why I'm writing down a time okay. code. There's a reason for that. <laughs> like, no clip of music for Thursday. <laughs> Elmwood uh, Park trash. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Mr. Costa. The Mr. The, Costa. Funny part is, here's the funny part is, no one ever commented on the Elmwood Park trash stuff. That cracks me up. No one ever hit a word about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, pick a window, any window. So here are the, here are the comments. Thank you. I'm going to jump over to YouTube. I didn't know there was even a TikTok comment. That's the funny part. I knew about the YouTube one. I didn't know about the TikTok one until this morning when I was putting together the run sheet. So the, on the YouTube, on TikTok, I'll take TikTok first. Somebody actually said, we want proof that you smashed your head through a window. That's a nice thing to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> smashed your head in a the window. There you go, Sal. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll get to that. <laughs> and the other two were from, from YouTube. It was, it was, um, she has to take wrestling seriously if she wants to be world champion. I'm not even sure who she's talking, who he's talking about, whether it's Liv or Ronda, but at least that's a nice way to put it, things. <laughs> yes. Talking about, but my think... favorite is, as we always get, dude, it's, dude, it wrestling, anything is believed. <laughs> dude, that's right. it wrestling. I'll comment. Ah. Um, dude, it not serious. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I don't love these comments because, like, I think the lines are coming together. Like, I'm not listening to your show. You probably didn't listen anyway. Probably weren't listening anyway. Do these people that make the post proofread their post before they send it? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Uh, Okay. And 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 that's why the country's going downhill because we have people that ain't reading right and can't be educated. So, is our children learning? I literally just need to sit quiet on that so I remember to actually isolate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The, I just also wanted to make sure that it was dad that said that. The oldest one on this panel is the one who said that. <laughs> That's my awesome <laughs> note fact. Yes, I stand by my comment. I just I just wanted to make sure I noted that. Okay. Um, also written down time code. Anyway, um <laughs> So anywho, let's get into before we get into the wrestling. We're kind of doing, we're going to do kind of a state of the wrestling address today because of other of, just because there's so much going on. And we're still not going to cover everything we missed in the last few weeks. But we'll still cover enough. But um, before we get to that, the breaking news we have to at least bring up because it's a big deal in in the entertainment world. It is the Sav Extra now and now the Sav Extra and Writers Guild strike going on in Hollywood and all over the country, really. Um, it's the first time in 60 years that both are striking at the same time. The Hollywood is pretty much shut down now. Um, Yay! I've been following along on TikTok, and I am in full support of these unions because they are getting fucked on so many levels. It's not even funny. Um, the residuals and all that kind of stuff—they are not making. They, they a lot of them are not making livable enough wage to get insurance. That's how much sounds, how they're not making right now. <laughs> sounds like most of the country. Yeah, it's bad. Um, I can't blame them for striking. This is what unions are for. You know, um, Sal, any thoughts before we get into our honorable stuff? Um, let's just hope that it gets resolved soon because uh, they're not making anything at this point. That's true. The, mm. also, they're not making anything for anyone to watch. So the, so the freaking um, major companies are like, oh, fuck, we're running out of content. <laughs> we're running out of content. Well, one of the issues I heard that the actors are concerned about is the AI that is being mainstream into television shows and movies. Oh, they don't oh, want... oh, you, you, oh, 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 Jesus Christ. I, you just brought that up. You know what? Yeah. You know what? Apparently, they, they wanted able, they wanted extras to sign contracts that said, we have the right to your vid, to your um, likeness through AI, and we don't have to pay you in the future for your future future content. No. Oh. <laughs> no, thank you. I, 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 I call the last straw. <laughs> I, I, I call bullshit on that one. That was the last draw that led to the strike officially. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, I they, done good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they they talked about this jokingly, but I think some of the studios are seriously looking into it. That hey, we can like computer generate a likeness and have someone dub their voice in, and bam, we got a we got a TV show, we got a movie. I'm sorry, it is not the same. That and also AI, AI can't write good scripts. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Oh, I mean, take a look at the AI chatbot. 
Oh, that's funny. I'm sorry. They got a chat about hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just make sure we address that before we get on with our show, because if we didn't, I feel like we would have been bad people for not only talking about it. Do we? How long has the strike been going on? The official writer strike, I think we're at 75 days, and the, uh-huh. and the Actors Guild just started, like recently in the last week. I know that Fran Drescher made a comment, because she's the president of the uh, Screen Actors Guild. So, Oh, is she? I didn't actually know that. Is she really? Yeah. Oh, yes, cool. she is. I did not know that. Well, they, yeah, the nanny. I, I didn't know she was the president of the Actors Guild. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. That's pretty damn awesome for her. That's actually really cool. I, I honestly didn't know that. So, all right. Oh, let's do this. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right. So, like I said, we're going to do a bit of a state of wrestling address. We haven't done We do this one once a year. Actually, normally, this is actually our con um, panel discussion. But I don't think we're doing one this year. Okay. I figured we'd do it now while we're catching up on anything. So, we have a lot of a couple weeks to catch up on. Anywho. So before we get to, into the state, and I don't mean to interrupt you. Oh, go, 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 go. Um, there was a death that we didn't get to address because we were on hiatus. And I would like to bring it up. Oh, go, go, just to talk about it. Gerald, Gerald draws off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Draws. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. Draws. Yes. Yeah. That one. I, I, I got a, I went back and I looked at his quote unquote audition for McMahon. And oh. how he was able to do a certain thing on command. Oh, uh, he's going to puke. He's going to puke. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Which I think solidified him. Um, is it not on beyond the, the mat? Company. Is it on beyond the mat? Um, yes, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but I that solidified him getting into the company. And then the rest, it just took off. And when they tried to get him to... Replace Hawk into the new Road uh, Road Warriors. Uh, it was it was cute, and I have to give it was cute. And he they utilized them for what they think they could have. And unfortunately, uh, it was a wrestling move that basically was done, and it was no malintent, and it was just an accident that forced him to be in. Uh, paralyzed from I believe was it the neck down? Yeah, yeah, uh, and and in wheelchair bound, but he's still being good spirits. And he went to conventions and he basically talked with fans over the internet. I'll so, give you, something. I'll give you something when it comes to that. He okay. um, the, my biggest memory for draws is actually hosting Bite This, the online um show that a lot of people this generation didn't even know happened because we have the bump and all the other crazy stuff that they do now. But before before like this became a thing, Zoom calls became a thing. Before all the before podcasting was a thing, mm-hmm. WWE had a YouTube show called a, a, um, a website show called the Don't Bite This, and he was one of the hosts. And I loved that show. And every yeah. Friday, I loved that show. So I, I also wanted to make sure I brought that up because that was a big deal yeah. to getting into this into this business, you know, into the wrestling business. But he I, was oh. he was very comfortable doing that, and I think he was comfortable probably doing mostly anything within the, the company. And I believe part part of, and I can't remember which years, um, they reached out to him to be like a goodwill ambassador for the company, and he had no issues. And he even said that uh, I'm not mad or upset at WWE. I'm not mad or upset about the situation that happened. It's one of the things that when you're a wrestler, you try to you know protect each other from getting hurt. Unfortunately. It, Accidents happen. Exactly, it's a wrestling business. Shit happens. As much as everyone loves to give shit that, oh, it's fake. Injuries are real, and draws is the perfect proof of that. Yeah, and we're dealing with other injuries and other other like right now. Yeah, like, like Brian Hamilton, we don't know what he's coming back. Apparently, his injury is worse than we thought. We don't know what he's coming back. So yeah, mentality. Tal, go ahead. It's like it's like it's like what they say. It, it's not fake. It's predetermined, but everything else about it is definitely not. Fake. Think. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I always say that. You're absolutely right. Hundred percent. Tell me any thoughts on draws? Um, I mean, it, it was it was a sad situation, for sure. Um, you know, I, I'm cl- I'm glad in the sense that there was no hard feelings because of it. You know, it was an accident. Um, it was unfortunate, obviously. Um, 
but it was just so tough to see because we were watching when it happened. You know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't like somebody from before our time or whatever. It, it was somebody that we were watching at, at, on TV at that time. And it was it was so difficult to to hear the story and see him in the wheelchair for the first time, um, and just now it, it's you know it's unfortunate that he unfortunately passed, but um, hopefully now he's not bound to anything and he's able to be free wherever he is. Very 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 well, but. And I, I think because of his injury along with uh, Chris Lewinsky, um, they have basically changed. Oh, yeah. Well, that, of- that, and, and that and Benoit. Combination yes. of all. Yep. You know, Benoit, the anniversary, the anniversary of Benoit just happened. Yeah. As well. So, like, a combination of all that, things have changed in the wrestling business in general. Yes. I, and they're, they're, they're more cautious now on injuries, especially concussion-related injuries, Especially uh, and and tears, you know, in, in muscles and things of that nature, because they know that if they don't diagnose this correctly down the road, it's going to cause more issues and problems. Exactly. All right. Um, let's jump over to something else. I have no transition here whatsoever. So, um, since nobody on the torch is talking about this for some reason, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes over there that they're not talking about this. But um, our buddy of the our friend of the show, Zach Haydorn, um, left the PW Torch. He was assistant editor over at PW Torch. He is no longer. He is actually moving over to SCScoops.com as being a managing editor. He'll have a podcast and a YouTube show. The reason I wanted to bring it up here, I'm one of the friends of the show, and I always like to talk about We talked about Nick Hoffman when he last wrestling Inc. He went over to Hot to Hoffman. But they mm-hmm. at least talk about it over wrestling. I don't know what the hell is going on with the Torch. And I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for this. I know some people have been listen to this show. But, like, no one's talking about it. And I don't know why. <laughs> like, I have zero clue what's going on. And I'm not going to ask Zach directly because it's not my place to ask him directly, especially Maybe. when he's starting a new job now. But, like, I don't understand what's going on over there. Um, the only thing I know, and I said this to Sal, was the only thing I heard was a little shot at the YouTube channel that was Zach was in charge of, that has been struggling, because, I'm sorry, YouTube channels are really difficult to do, um, if you don't know what the hell you're doing. Um, and that, that was the only thing I've heard. I've heard a little shot at the YouTube channel, and that's about it. I've heard nothing else about this on an <laughs> actual show. I listen to Torch Radio mm-hmm. all the time. I've heard maybe no one, maybe no one can talk about it because of a legal issue. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I have zero clue what happened, but I just want to make sure we talk. We mentioned it here. Okay. Uh, over to I will. I want to check his podcast out whenever it starts. I don't know that website. I don't know the people over there. I don't know their format. I have zero clue, but good for him. Okay. I do see a lot of posts on like Facebook from them, and they seem pretty, you know, pretty great with their info. I know it's weird. It's a weird situation. So. All right, um, real quick, I'm going to do this fast. New Japan is doing the G1 Climax right now. Um, I, I would love to talk about Night 4, but I have not had time to watch it today. I wanted to get my, I didn't get home from work till I got home a lot work, work a lot later than I planned, so I have not had a chance to watch Night 4 yet. I will be watching it after we're done with this. But I have, I will talk, I can, I can give you a quick highlight of the other three nights. I did want to give two matches from each night for people who are not watching. That's sh- what you should see. Um, for Night 1, I would suggest you watching Renderita Shudu Umino. For two reasons. Number one, it went to a tie limit draw, which was a, a, unbelievable to watch. And also, these two men are going to be the future of this company, and this is going to be a match they're going to be showing five years from now as, this is their first matchup at the G1. Like, this is match will be the match people will be talking about five years from now, because it was that good. It was that entertaining, and it's that important to the history of this company and the future. And from the whole night one, um, Will Osher versus Tai Chi was really good as well. Um, Night two, the, to no surprise whatsoever, Eddie Kingston and Shigo Takaki stole the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> These two men beat the living shit out of each other for 15 minutes, and it was amazing. <laughs> it was so much fun to watch. It, it, it must be Eddie's high threshold of pain and tolerance. Uh, and this is his first official, like, high-profile New Japan match. So it was a big deal to him, and boy, did he show it. That he wanted to show how damn good he is, and it was entertaining to watch. Um, and then the main event of this night was Amtente um, Naito versus Jesh Cobb. And that was really, really a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to say this here. I said, if you want any more comments on me on the G1, go to my Threads account because I have been talking about it over there, just giving my thoughts as I'm watching the show. And um, I'll say it here. I'll say it every time. God damn it. I hate evil. 
Just throwing it out there. Can't stand the guy. Can't stand the matches. I want to punch. I want to. I want to throw something at my screen every time I see him wrestle. I cannot stand the guy. But I have to do with him <laughs> for eight matches during this tournament. Um, <laughs> um. Anyway, and then night three, um, Randy Rita again, and Yoda and Yoda Tushina, They went to another time of a draw, which was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. By the way, the reason I'm taking time to draw, there's 20, all these matches, 20 minute time limits. 20 minute time limits for all the matches in the blocks. So it's actually making it really interesting because the time code, they're doing time calls every five minutes and then the last like five minutes, like every minute they're doing time calls. So it's actually really interesting to listen to the time calls in the background for these matches. Um, and then the main event was um, Sonata versus Shona Umino. And Shona Umino is going to be a fucking star. This guy is going to be a star. He is so damn good. Um, his entrance is is amazing. He is this great, and I I gotta give credit where it's due for him. Like I said, I have not seen night four yet. Night three was weird because they were doing it in a gymnasium, not in an arena. So um, yeah, I noticed that weird because like they have like when they go out to the ground, they're like in the middle of like a gymnasium. They're like, wrestling with was, was bizarre. It's bizarre to watch night one. I, I think night four is in the same place, so that's really strange. But um, overall, I've been having a lot of fun. Night three, I'm not going to lie, I was really tired from work. I definitely, I almost fell asleep during Kenta versus Hiro Khan. I wow. almost fell asleep during that match. Um, wow. Happened to have two heels fighting each other and no one cares in the crowd. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but um, night four, I'll get around to today. I definitely say go watch the one. Um, one more thing I will say, if you are subscribing to New Japan World, take advantage of right now where the, where the um, exchange rate is low. Um, I saved about three bucks in the exchange rate from January to now. Um, right. In January, I paid for the for Wrestle Kingdom. It was like ten bucks. Still not a bad price at all. No the exchange rate. But when I did this one, is seven twenty five for the month, and it'll stay that way until you cancel. So next month, when it continues in August, it'll still be seven twenty five. So oh. the exchange rate. So there you go. If you're in the states and you want to go to the G one, it's a really really low price right now. So go take advantage of it. So let's move on to some other companies before we get to the big ones. Um, ha- Sal, have you been following the WrestleCon Rick Steiner situation? No, I have not. Okay. So for those who missed it, back at WrestleCon, back at WrestleMania weekend, um, Rick Steiner was kicked out of the building because he made some transparent remarks against Giselle Zaw, and Giselle Saw in the mm-hmm. middle of things, and he was um, he was banned from the Wrestle WrestleCon. Um, this also affected Braun Breaker, who is his son. And um, the crowd was actually turning on him at his match that same night that all happened. And you could hear the crowd actually, it was actually the night that they had Braun Breaker started getting booed, was actually that night because of everything that happened with his dad in the daytime. Um, Didn't well, he like make a statement on that too, I would believe? Yeah, he did. I'm He's, not my father yeah. or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. He addressed it. I give credit for I'm me. Not my uncle. At least he addressed it. At least he yeah. addressed it. <laughs> and like Rick, who didn't address it, and he did Scott. So then uh, I think it was Monday. Monday afternoon, there was an announcement for WrestleCon because they're doing a Russell, doing a WrestleCon during um, SummerSlam weekend. In right. the tra- tie-in with SummerSlam. And um, they announced the Steiner Brothers are going to be WrestleCon. Right. Well, that didn't sit well with anybody. That sat well with <laughs> nobody. Um, including Effie. Um, yes. And the entire LGBTQ plus wrestling community. <laughs> um... They had to do that. They had this whole spiel on how he's getting a second chance and how he apologized, but just but um, just so Shaw didn't want to be there for the apology because she didn't think it was going to be a real apology. And they addressed that he apologized to them. Well, then Effie made a big stink out of it. And if Effie making a big stink about you, listen because it's Effie. Um, well, what happened was apparently they went to Rick and said, Well, you have to make a public apology. He refused, so they pulled him from the lineup, though he will no longer be at WrestleCon. <laughs> 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 This happened in 72 hours. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Now, like, Crash oh. <laughs> and burn. <laughs> Indeed. Wow. Sal, thoughts? <laughs> um, I mean, it's not like he would have been a main attraction draw, so why not? Oh. Sorry, I just got to about Russ Fenton Hennock, but I'll this email when we're done. Um, it's actually good news. I'll get back to you dad about that later. It's like it's good news of a fan expo. So, so because of Rick's actions, I don't see him and Scott doing any other cons 
because they don't want to deal with the negativity and the fallout. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't actually know. I mean, Rick can go out on his own. He doesn't need Scott, to be honest, in well, my opinion. He can also go out on his own. Scott, no, everyone's got, got better on than Rick sometimes. You know? I mean, yeah. Everyone has an opinion, but here's the thing if your opinion is going to be hurtful uh, and vengeful and, 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 and full of hate and, and anger and rage, then just keep it to yourself. Um, you don't need to voice your disconcern, especially at a place of, like RussellCon, where everything is, is public and you have different media outlets there and you know right away the minute that something negative comes out of your mouth, bam, everyone's going to know about it within five minutes. Five minutes, like 30 seconds. You know, I mean, <laughs> 30 seconds. you know, <laughs> here's the thing. And I don't know where Rick's has that and I don't pretend to know, but how hard would it have been to say, hey, I'm sorry for my hateful comments, uh, rude, and, and they were basically were, uh, discourteous and 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 I will no longer make those type of comments. How hard is that? Just to kind of like extend the olive branch and say I'm sorry, and things would have been somewhat better, but tense. And also, like we we had this discussion with Jay Briscoe back with everything with Jay Briscoe when he said his yeah. comment, but yeah. he publicly apologized. He, yes, did, he did steps, talked to the yes, same people, did. talked to the people, apologized, did his work to make yeah. sure. And it still didn't work. It didn't work for some people. And I understood that at the time. But right. like, at least he did the work. <laughs> yeah. You know, Rick doesn't want to do the work. That's his own damn fault. You, you know? know? Yeah, like I said, everyone has an opinion. But, you know, if it's something that's going to be very hateful, then keep it to yourself. And say it in, in, in private where no one's around to, to hear you. All right. Um, let's move on. Um, a couple of quick notes. First of all, I, I'll talk about the Triple A thing first. So, Triple A Triple Mania Night 2 happened this past weekend. By the way, fucking Friday and Saturday, there were literally like five stick wrestling shows going on at the same time. Like, it was insane going on on Friday night and Saturday night. Um, but anyway, so Wrestle um, Triple Mania Night 2 was going on. Uh, I have one note in here, but one other note I want to make note QT Marshall beat um, Penta in an ambulance match. And it got so bad in that building that they had to hold people back from attacking him in the ring. That's <laughs> how pissed people were in that building. <laughs> attacking QT? Yes. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Let him go. It was, I, I started the pictures of it. I'm like, holy hell, this is, I love that kind of stuff because I think people, people are into it. I mean, yeah. Are yeah. Let, yeah. Let, him, let him go do it. Then he can bring it up on QT TV. Oh my God, I need a bodyguard. Oh, whatever. It was, um, by the way, the, re the main event was the um the third match of the a uh, little the little new trilogy they were doing of um the Kingo versus Omega. Uh -huh. That was the main event. The Kingo won the okay. defending title, so he won. Um, so what happened here was um post match they did a whole press conference on the field. They had a field on the field, and apparently a security guard that used to work for AAA was on the field, and. Don Callis attacked Teddy Omega because they're continuing the storyline from AEW. Like, it was continuing storyline from multiple companies and you do your thing. Makes sense to me. Right. And there was this footage apparently on AEW TV to help um, Don Callis out on AEW television. It all makes sense to me 100%. Until the security guard didn't realize, didn't actually recognize Don Callis, didn't realize what was going on, and attacked Don Callis. <laughs> oh, no. A sleeper hold. <laughs> on camera. Oh, no. On camera. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, um, that happened. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I should say what I want to say, but couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Yeah, it was a <laughs> bad situation. It's like wow, Mexico is fucking crazy when it comes to pro wrestling. <laughs> Holy shit! So not uh, up here in Mexico, it's just a whole different level of crazy down there. <laughs> so <laughs> someone. Did not let this gentleman know what was going on. No, apparently he wasn't security guard on duty that day for that show. He just happened uh, to be there. Uh, he happened to be there, so it was a weird situation. So, yeah, I, 
I'm uh, sure he, they probably told him after the fact. Yeah, you think? I, 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 I think. blame. I wouldn't even be mad at freaking um, that California to sue the guy. I, I wouldn't even blame him for it. You know, like I can't well, he, he, legally. If he had no idea what was going on and he thought that was real, he took action the way he saw it. Eh, I don't know. I, I think you should pay. You're at a wrestling show. You should maybe pay attention to what's going on. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I, I, here's one better. I think you should basically tell all your employees what's going on. But again, like I said, he wasn't on duty, but it's not the point. <laughs> it's not the point. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, so I, one more thing I want to bring up here. We uh-huh. have another Samoan Dynasty wrestler. Wrestling. Another one. Um, Zila Fatu debuted at um at Booker T's Reality Wrestling Weekend. I'm trying to figure out like where in the family he is. I actually have the I have the Samoan Dynasty chart up in front of me. There is a chart on Wikipedia, and I have zero clue who's related to, but I know he's part of the family. I don't know. <laughs> Probably a cousin of a uh, cousin, cousin or, or an uncle or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> something. So I just wanted to throw that out there. We have another Samoan in there. Another generation of Samoan going on. So that's fun. Did I did I hear it that there was some buddy, some wrestler that wanted to challenge Booker T in a match? Right back. Thank you. <laughs> he wants to fight Booker T. And Booker T said, fine, find me. I will punch you in the face. Oh, the hey. <laughs> I need to see that. Okay, your hand up, go ahead. Uh, he is the son of Umaga. Umaga. Okay. Umaga. Oh my God. And Roman Reigns' cousin. Okay, I'm looking it up okay. on the card here to see if I can if I can find the real name. Then that's really awesome. That's really really cool. So I know um Solo does a lot of stuff for medication to Umaga, so that's really cool. Yeah. You know. Oh, oh, there it is. Found it. I found it. So that's so really. He would be a cousin of Jay and Jimmy. Yeah, the whole family. Everyone's yeah. cousin. Everybody's cousin somewhere. Everybody is. So we we have an offshoot to the bloodline. Yeah. So well, remember we also have um Ava down at NXT. So we have another one down there. The female. Yeah. Player. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Like we do have them everywhere. We know Ellie Smooth. Apparently, the wrestler called Ellie Smooth is also in the family. I don't know who that is, but there you go. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, quickly over to Impact Wrestling. Um, anniversary happened this past weekend as well. Told you, there was a lot going on this weekend. <laughs> And I was pay. I did pay. I didn't watch it because I was watching. What was I watching that night? I think I was watching Collision because of the two or three falls match. We'll get to in a little while. But mm-hmm. I was paying attention to what was going on, and a lot of actually really cool stuff that came out of the show. So I'll run them down, and if anyone wants to stop me and comment on it, but I'm going to run this down real fast. Um, Kushida won the Ultimate X match. Well, that's pretty damn awesome. Um, Killer Kelly and Macho Sandwich, who apparently have this insane like sexual chemistry on the show, are mm-hmm. the Knockout World Tag Team Champions. A figure. Oh. Eric Young, who apparently was working for WWE, but then but then got but then asked for his release because he didn't want to deal with Vince. Um, just re- went back to Impact Wrestling to align with Scott Demore, who by the way was wrestling on the anniversary to reform Team Canada. Okay. Hey. A one Bob Lee was on commentary. If I remember A one from the old Team Canada days, he was on commentary for this match. Yep. And for some reason, nobody explained this to me. What is it? Oh, by the way, Bully Ray and I forgot who the point to attack partner was. Oh, I think it was Africa to attack partner. Was it was Steve Macklin, I think, or something like that. Um, on the other side, but no one had explained to me why Darren McCarty was the special guest enforcer of this match. No one explained this to me. No one, is, no one even knows why. <laughs> no idea why Darren McCarty attack wrestling. He- <laughs> he had nothing better to do. I don't know. Where McCarty is. Go ahead. He's a, he's a legendary Detroit Red Wing. <laughs> no idea. He was the same okay, guy. so, okay, now. <laughs> no idea. Why did he even do with this show? <laughs> <laughs> he Maybe, you know. <laughs> he's aligned himself with Team Canada. I don't know. Well, I understand. It made no sense to me, but that's the thing. Um, Leo Rush beat Chris Saban with an extra championship. By that line, didn't last very long. He's going to be the match. It was only 80 seconds. Um, a couple names. Longer, back. Never mind. Okay, Dad, good. I was going to say, you were saying something? I was going to say, that's longer than in the bedroom, but I said, never mind. Oh. Oh, oh. oh that's not fair. He's getting older. Um, <laughs> 
Um, a couple of names I haven't heard in a long time, but it's nice to see they landed on their feet. Well, Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster uh, from NXT UK days, they are now the Impact World Tag Team Champions. They're now known as the culture, and they're now the Impact World oh. Tag they're I was wondering, I couldn't put it together. I'm like, who the hell? I know I know these people existed before. Who are they? Yeah, it was Mark Andrews and Flack Morgan Webster from NXT UK and NXT. So there you go. From the um, NXT UK tournaments, from those, we did watch those. So there you go. Um, Trinity is now the knockout champion. She beat the Perazzo. So that's pretty damn cool. By the way, the visual of her holding the Impact National Champion, Impact, um, the Impact Knockout Championship was bizarre. I'm not going to lie. Her holding that belt was bizarre. That is bizarre. Something else we'll talk about a little later, but we'll get there. Um, and um, Alex, uh, Alex Shelley beat Nick Aldis to retain the title, the main title. Um, Nick Aldis apparently now contract with Impact Wrestling is up. Apparently he only signed on for like a month to do this show. Because then Josh Alexander came out, surprised everybody, came back three months early from his, in- from his injury and confronted Alex Shelley to go back after the belt he did ever lost. So... Okay, I, I the, the thing with Nick Aldis, I kind of heard, and I don't think no, no, no. it has been confirmed, but supposedly WWE has agreed to work with Impact and will be having some of the Impact stars work into the organization and storylines. I have never heard that one, but I have. And, and, and supposedly vice versa, where some of the WWE stars are supposed to go to Impact. I don't see that happening for two reasons. But that, I no, mean, no, supposedly, no, Dad, I'm, I'm answering your. I'm, I'm giving you a thoughts on this because I have. Okay. I doubt this is happening. Okay. Um. Number one is they work with New Japan, and number two, they work with AEW. Those are two reasons why there's no way in hell Impact Wrestling is working with WWE right now. What I have heard. Uh huh. What I have heard is they're interested in Nick Aldis to come in as a trainer. That would be huge. That I've heard. That one legitimately that, I've that heard. That would be huge. That could be interesting. If they bring him in to help train and occasionally wrestle, that'd be pretty cool. Yes. Um, it was like surprising to see Josh Alexander. So I have a very valid question. Did okay. anybody know there, did anyone remember there was a regular pay per view on Friday? I do only because it's you know twenty minutes away. Yeah, I forgot. I'm not going to bullshit you. I forgot this was happening, and I'm a Ring of Honor person. But again, I haven't watched the weekly program, and I don't even really have, I, I I just canceled Honor World because no one watches the show anymore. So what's the point of having the service? Um, not gonna lie, forgot the show was happening until um Saturday when I was watching Collision and they were promoting it. I'm like, oh, it's here on Saturday. I'm not ordering yeah. the show. I'm not going to be home Friday night. I'm not, I'm going to be at a Disney um Disney DJ event. I'm not going to be home. Um, okay. and Saturday is Telefondo, and I still going to watch Mattown. So, uh, SmackDown, no offense to the Ring of Honor, SmackDown's more important because Roman Reigns is on the show this week. So, um, by the way, despite it being FS1, Roman Reigns is on the show this week. Um, no. That's well, they need the ratings. <laughs> no, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice surprise to see they put Roman on an FS1 episode. That was a nice surprise. But anyway, um, so this is part of Honor's happening Friday. They don't have a main event for the show. Um, it was supposed to be Claudio versus Mark Briscoe, and Mark Briscoe got hurt. So, I don't know. Oh, no. Yeah, he he's out with an injury, um. So he's not going to be here. By the way, apparently I t- that apparently all correct typo is had his auto correct um Briscoe and add an extra I. I don't know why. Um, Briscoe. So the other so they don't have a main event yet. And then um Tony Khan said it, it can't be Eddie Kingston because he's in the G one. So they don't have a clue who's Claudio is facing on Friday. So that's always fun to know you don't have a main event going into a pay per view that costs thirty five dollars. That's always fun. <laughs> the other matches. I wonder. Hero. Well, the only matches they have announced are um, Athena versus Will Nightingale oh, for okay. the um, Women's Championship, and I think Willow should win. Um, Kuro Shibata versus Daniel Garcia in a rematch for the Pure Championship. I think Daniel Garcia should win his belt back. Uh-huh. Um, Samoa Joe, for some reason, is in Dalton Castle. I don't know why. <laughs> you don't know why. And, um, oh, yeah, I forgot Lucha Bros. Are holding the tag belts, and they're facing the King of them best friends in Aussie Open. Again, I didn't know Aussie Open was back, because anyone was hurt. Apparently, Aussie Open was back. Did not know that until literally when I was typing up the front sheet this morning. Um, <laughs> so, Claudio Castanoli, um, who would you think would be his opponent? 
don't know. Problem is, I don't watch the show. So I have zero clue who the main event is right now. I have zero clue. Because Eddie Kingston would have made sense, but he's in the G1. That's the only problem. Eddie right. Kingston would have been that person. He would have been the guy I'd say, put him in the main event, have him beat Claudio. But he's in the G1. That day. He had a, he had a, he had a match, like, literally six hours like, on a, the, that morning in the G1. So, like, that's not I mean, happening. It was not that morning. I, mean, I think it's either Friday or Sunday here the match. So that ain't happening. Somebody so, like Miro? Who? Miro? No, I don't think so. He's not an ROH guy. I don't think he throw like Cole Companion there for the fun of it. I don't know. I don't have okay. a like honestly, I couldn't even tell you who's on the ROH roster at this point. Like I couldn't even tell you. Hmm. So that hmm. thing is Interesting. happening. Interesting. So, so next week when we come back to um to do NFT, I'll have to tell you what happens in the Ring of Honor show. I'm not watching. So there you go. I'll set up the okay. result. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't spend 35 bucks on a theme night with Little Nightingale. I, I can't do it. As much as I want to see that match, I can't spend 35 bucks on just that match. It's just not a thing I can do in good conscience. You know? <laughs> <laughs> as much as Mandy loves Willow, even she would tell me, don't order the show to Little Nightingale. Like, don't do it. <laughs> um, so much up over speaking of which, much up over to AW. Before we get to the this past one Saturday show, what are you about the collision so far? So I like. Um, it still feels a little different, and it feels like a totally separate show from Dynamite, not including Rampage. Um, it's enjoyable. I still love the set. I can't keep my eyes off of it. I don't know why. I, just, I love that set. I can't argue with that. I'm I'm loving the fact that the show feels different. It's slower. Yeah. It's not as high strung as Dynamite. There's not as much going on, which is nice because you get to relax and enjoy a match without like a hundred and things going on around it. Um, it's it's just it's nice and relaxing. It maybe because of the different color co- different commentary team. Um, maybe that's part of it. Or maybe the fact that it's just wrestling and they have promos and they're explaining they have video packages and like there you go. They, they yeah. have- I don't believe Wilson John playing the team song for some reason. I'm not complaining about that, but it's just random, but I love it. Um, it's just, it feels so different. <laughs> it's got that old school appeal where you get more wrestling, you get the promos, you get the vignettes, you get storyline, but yet it's all, you know, timed and pieced well where they're more focused on the matches than the wrestling. So if you get more wrestling in as the show goes on, you keep the people happy instead of like, Dragging out promos and storylines and blah blah blah, and people start going, just start nodding off. So it's got that old school appeal, and I think that's what Tony Khan is is trying for, and it seems to be working so far. I yeah. still think it's on the wrong day. I agree. Um, the funny part was like we were joking. Remember, remember when we went on our break? We had our two week break. We had a couple of shows up, but like we're not breaking. I said right before the break, the next two Saturdays, I'm not going to watch television. There's no way I'm going to watch Closing the next Saturdays. And guess what? I didn't watch Closing the next two Saturdays. It didn't happen. One was because I was, one was because um, we were catching up on stuff before uh, Money in the Bank. Three other uh-huh. teams. Started to watch. It was a moment. No, it was Money in the Bank night. That's actually the reason why we missed the No, Money in the Bank was on a Saturday afternoon. It was in Jersey. One week was in Jersey. But the week before that, what was the pay per view? Oh, it was Double or Nothing. It was Double or Nothing. And right. um, Saturday night, we were catching up on TV because we wanted to get our TV cut up. So we didn't have to rebound it on Sunday. So that's why we missed the show two weeks in a row. And, it, and then it came back. When we got back from vacation and I watched the collision on the Saturday. I'm like, it didn't feel like I missed anything. It didn't feel like I missed anything. <laughs> yeah. So that's one complaint. Um, but other than that, I do I actually really enjoy it. The one thing that's surprising me is Mr. Punk. Um, I know Sal, you're not a fan right now. I understand. Everyone has their mm-hmm. very device. He's gotta win me, he's, he's gotta win me back. That's fine. I, I respect that. CJ is the same way. Like I fully respect it. You know, but I gotta give him credit because he's definitely putting on some good matches. He's been he's been just being himself. I feel like he's back to his old self, which is not a bad thing because I really enjoyed old CM Punk. Uh-huh. So I'm enjoying that. Um, he's obviously not winning every match because he lost in the Owen Hart Memorial um, Finals, which I did not expect. That was a nice surprise, especially the way he lost. I didn't expect that, but I, I'm enjoying Punk right now. Like I think he's doing a good job. I think we they had to get out of Canada. They gotta get their eyes out of Canada. Because if they get back to the States, then I can give you an actual word on how Punk's doing. Like I think next week's in Jersey. I think this coming Saturday's in Jersey. This upcoming Saturday's in Jersey, yeah. So I think that's gonna be a better audience to be able to tell you how Punk's doing. 
So the Canadian, the first half of the Canadian tour was like biased towards Kenny Omega. And then the second half, and then there was that weird show in Hamilton that like four good people showed up for the show. Um, and then <laughs> last two weeks, he was like, he was on wrestling under Owen Hart's name. So no one's going to be with that. So let's get back to the US. And then we can finally figure out what the hell, how he's doing. Um, Dad, what do you think? I think Punk is trying to win people back and doing it at a comfortable pace where he's not trying too hard, but he is doing what I think needs to be done in order to win fans back, which is you don't have to win every match, but look good doing it. Um, And the promos that he's cutting are good. And if he continues that type of formula, I think slowly – the fans will come back to him and kind of understand, hey, you know, everyone has bad days. Everyone has things that happen. And, you know, I'm no different than me and you, but yet I'm going to extend the olive branch and show you that I can be a better person. It also helps. That's a lot of behind the scenes word that apparently he is trying harder in the back to mm-hmm. reputation after what happened at Brawl Out. So, like, I understand he's trying harder. And I also got to respect it. I got to respect him for it. You know what I mean? I, trying. I also understand that he's he's mingling with the younger talent. And yeah. I agree. Basically, Wait, he actually reported that information. Yeah, and, and that he's really receptive. And, and he's had some great conversations with the younger talent. And basically picking their brains on, on, on ideas and you know, different types of promos. Or what do you think of this? What do you I think of that? that? I respect the fact that he's doing it. Like, right. I respect- Fact that he's doing this kind of stuff. So it's it's kind of like passing the torch in a way, which is great because you know you've paved the way for other people to follow now and just pass it on. I agree, hundred percent. Um, speaking of, it, I'll actually jump around here because I mentioned Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks apparently being a heel, apparently. Um, I think he'll the most loved person in the most woman most loved woman wrestler in the world. Um, they won the Owen Hart Memorial Tournaments. Um, I, I don't know why Drew Little Liger was there. That was weird. That was really weird and bizarre for Drew Little Liger to come out for two seconds to then get brushed off of Ricky Starks and go away. I have no idea what that was about. That was weird. I, I, I'm <laughs> guessing oh, it, it was oh, because... Oh, I said that? Father Bells was a total clusterfuck? Yeah. On Saturday? <laughs> I think uh, he, Liger was there because of the one heart. Oh, I understand uh, that, but like, come back out later during the Martha Hart segment at least. Right. You know, like come back out later. Um, can, can we you know, was, super was kick Martha, uh, Martha Hart? Something. What was, was that? Sound? Martha Hart was she sober? So, what did you say? <laughs> I said like, super kick Martha Hart or something. <laughs> oh, 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 that was, that was worth asking to repeat. That was totally worth it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Maybe you pointed out that she never even mentioned Ricky and Willow by name, never mentioned them by name. <laughs> So that was also weird. She's um, just so pretentious. Like, oh my god! Like, why couldn't that and, blackout happen during their damn speech? That almost made Dana Warrior look good. Almost. Made Dana Warrior look good. Don't go that far. Almost. Coming, almost. No, it's coming close. Not, not, not there, but almost. <laughs> but um, no. I, I'm, I, I, if anybody has a bad thing to say about Willow Knight, you know, there's something wrong with you. Because she is so freaking lovable and entertaining and fun. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> you know, I didn't like her at first, but she is winning me over. It's impossible for her not to, I think. I told you. I had told you that was going to happen, too. I told you. <laughs> you like, actually, even you with your, like, black heart on wrestling sometimes can't. <laughs> she, has that, yeah. she has that infectious attitude that once you kind of talk and, and, and understand... And you know what's? I'll actually give you a better one. We were at the um, we were at the uh, AEW show we went to a few months ago, and Ring mm-hmm. of Honor tapers were before it, and half the crowd did not know who she was. But by the middle of the match, that she didn't have to cut a promo. She just got to be herself, and ha- the entire arena would chanting her name by the middle of the match. Yep. Like yep. that says a lot to me about a person yep. that that could happen. Yep. And I saw it. We witnessed it, so that's pretty damn cool. <laughs> um, the other thing from the closing that has to be brought up. Holy shit! FTR, Bullet Club Gold, Jay White, and Juice and Rock Hard, Juice Robinson. 
What? <laughs> what was that? 58 minutes. Like, that was, that was more than you, half the show. What, what <laughs> you got is a match that would have been on a premium live event. Interview. Collision. <laughs> And it was damn good. That was one of the, that might be one of my matches of the year. Like that was absolutely incredible. 203 falls match, 58 minutes for the belt. FCR did win and they did retain. But that second fall, that fucking second fall had me on the edge of my seat. Because after it became one nothing, um, Jay White and Drew Robinson, I was like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen. That second fall was so damn entertaining and so damn exciting that I, I did not know what was going to happen. I almost thought maybe they were going to get swept. I chose was going to get swept the way I was going. Yeah. And then I thought it was going to go to a time limit draw. I really did. But it was almost over. And the story had time code and counting down the phone back. I'm like, we're going to do an hour time limit draw, aren't we? I thought like, we're doing it. And no, it ended it with two minutes left in the match. <laughs> like, holy hell. What if, the, if you haven't seen this match, go out of your way. It was that fucking good. <laughs> yeah. And, and the end of the match. Oh. solidified their heel persona. Oh, yeah. These spinning instead of handshakes with awesome. What a great, great match. And you're right, Sal. It was literally the first hour of the show. Literally the first hour of the show. <laughs> um, and you know what also helped me with this one? Ian Riccoboni on the call. I don't Kevin Kelly's New Japan. And I don't want anyone to be like, I don't want to be like, well, I think Kevin Kelly shouldn't. I think Ian Riccoboni should be the voice of Collision. Because <laughs> oh, def- he did definitely. An amazing job on that show and that match especially. Definitely, we're doing an amazing job. Like <laughs> him and Nigel had this wonderful chemistry, and it just seemed that it was it clicked really well. So, hey Tony, if you're listening, I think the team of Ian and um, yeah. n- Nigel. and Nigel. Uh, nice. Thank you. Brain fart. Bueller. Bueller. Just said Bueller. it. Anybody? Yeah, I know. Bueller. I think Ian and, and Nigel. Put me. Put me on that one. <laughs> they are the right call team. And if Tony doesn't get it, then he. Well, I understand. Maybe, maybe Ian doesn't want to. Maybe Ian doesn't want to do the show every Saturday. That may have something to do with it too. Maybe well, Ian want to do the show every Saturday. I mean. Besides doing, you know, the, the call for Ring of Honor, I, I think this would be something good. Oh, I agree with you. I think it'd be amazing. I love yeah. it. You know, I love Ian Rickabani. I always have. When I heard he was doing the call, I was, you can ask Mandy, I was super excited. I'm like, okay, this is going to be great. You don't even yeah. know who Ian Rickabani is because you haven't listened to many shows. Like, I know how good he is. This is going to be so much fun. And he blew it out of the water. So oh, yeah. he did. They, they, they both did. It was um, great. So, Especially when it came to the FTR match. Yeah, so two other things. First of all, I don't have this on the notes, but I just checked Russell Ticks. And um, All In is now over 70,000 tickets sold. Nice. Wow. I have no idea how we can see it in this country yet, but it is 70,000 tickets sold. Um, mm-hmm. That's a big deal. Um, so last mm-hmm. thing on my thing for AEW, um, we got to talk about it. Nick Wayne. He officially debuted on Wednesday's, last Wednesday's Dynamite. Um, I've been looking forward to this personally. I watched him in DCW. He is actually currently one half of the DCW Tag Team Champions. Um, I I really like the guy. And I said to Mandy, I'm like, you have not watched a Nick Wayne match. You're going to love this guy. Um, what people don't realize is that he's from this area. And CJ actually has an autographed picture of Nick Wayne in his room. Personalized to him before he became. Oh, nice. Has an autographed photo of Nick Wayne already. Um, he's only 18 years old. He just turned 18. And 18, yeah. Just, just turned 18, just graduated high school. And here he is in like the main event match on um Dynamite before like the blood and gut segment, which is a big deal. Like here on Dynamite, it's this massive debut. I thought he looked great. Like I thought he looked yeah. great. Um CJ fell in love with him immediately, which is a big deal for that age range, that age group. Um Sal, your thoughts on Nick Wayne? I don't know how much you've seen of him. I know I've seen a lot of them. So your thoughts on Nick Wayne? Yeah, uh, no, it was his match is very good. It was very entertaining. Uh, he's got a very very bright future, and it's just literally just the beginning. Um, you know, he, like you said, he just turned eighteen. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of years to go, um, and it looks pretty good because, I mean, already this kid is good. So. Um, I can't wait to see what else happens, and hopefully, uh, 
it's not just another one of those things where he shows up for a couple of weeks and kind of goes away like, you know, action and dready, for example, because he came in, he debuted very strong. He beat Chris Jericho and then he kind of just went away. Oh, you mean the third Martin brother? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That is Dalton Nick Wayne. Uh, phenomenal talent. Uh, I've, I've watched his matches in other organizations. He, he's phenomenal. And you got to keep in mind that this, I don't want to say kid, but young man. He's a kid. What, he is a kid. He's literally uh, two years older than Christian. He's a kid. Like, <laughs> grew up in this, you know, around his father in his profession. And as he said, he's been in a wrestling ring since he's nine months old. So he's comfortable within there. And with Darby kind of taking him under his wing after dad passed and basically being with him kind of like an older brother type of thing and having that chemistry and going to Tony and say, Hey, I got this kid. This kid is phenomenal. We got to sign him before someone else does, because this is a kid that's going to impress and knock your socks off. And he does. Got to give TK some credit for signing him before he was out of high school. Yep. Give him a contact before he was out of high school. Like that. Yep. And Darby presented to to him at a match, and basically, Nick at, at thought that Darby was pulling his leg. He says, "No, I have a contract right here. Tony Khan, AEW. I mean, on, on Twitter when it happened. Yeah, and sign it. And it was, I guess it was a, a three year contract deal. Like that, something like that. And, 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 and Darby said, "If you impress Tony, it will be longer than three years." Um, by the way, he's also working with New Japan. He's also doing stuff at GCW. He's got kind of announced this big like all-star festival they're doing mm-hmm. now too. So like, I, it's the future's bright for this guy. Um, one little note that just broke actually yesterday was um, Vic, um we, were, we were talking about this few months ago. How Vicky Guerrero is officially a free agent today. Yes. So I, I would love to have her jump over to um WWE again. And this is my segue. That was my segue because <laughs> talking about NXT WWE. So we're not going to get a lot of NXT WWE because next week we're going to be heavily talking about NXT with Great American Bash. The week after that is SummerSlam. So we're not going to get into a lot of stuff, but there are a few things we think we got to talk about. Um, so <laughs> I made this. Run, I was working on this run sheet on Monday uh, during my lunch break, uh-huh. and literally in my notes I put Jody Dom. Did not think anything of it. This was a Monday afternoon during my lunch break. And I'm like, on Wednesday, I will finish up the run sheet. And we'll, I wanted, I really want to talk about Dirty Dom. I did not think anything of it. And then NXT happened. Um, <laughs> so, NXT. Last Tuesday on NXT, um, the, the Judgment Day was on the show. Because um, they were doing some weird feud with Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. And so they do. And um, the... Uh, <laughs> Dominic, for some reason, went up to Wesley with Rhea when Wesley's being interviewed and said, so you're the open challenge guy. And literally says, dead face, confident himself, I accept. Probably one of the best moments I've seen in a long time. <laughs> he says this, and um, Wesley's like, well, I don't do open challenges anymore, but we'll do it anyway because you you, you challenge me, I'll fight you anyway. Yep. And then right after that, they announced Wesley versus Mustafa Ali for the match. For the title, like right after this, they announced this match. So, like, okay, fine, we're doing this match at NXT next week. No one's thinking anything of it. So then suddenly we go to NXT and they announce it's the main event. Like, well, that's strange that Wesley is in the main event because Wesley's never in the main event. He's usually in the opening <laughs> or, or the hour mark of the show. He's usually the he's the person that comes on top of the hour. He's usually that's usually where they put Wesley. He's in the main event with Dominic Mysterio, Mister. I made evented raw the last three weeks. Um. <laughs> And I said, yes, Tal. When you go to bed early, you're missing Dominic Mysterio main events on Raw the last like three or four weeks on Raw. <laughs> Wonderful. So anyway, so main event of NXT this week is Wesley versus Dirty Dominic Mysterio for the NXT North American Championship. <laughs> Started to look at me and I'm like, there's no way this match is going to end clean because Dom can't. Dom's not going to lose. Dom can't lose. But Wes can't drop this title, especially if they ran out the match for next Sunday. Well, boy, I was wrong. I should not have been more <laughs> wrong because this match is going on. It actually be a good match. It ended up being a damn good match. Going back and forth. Um, and all of a sudden, the Judgment Day interferes. 
but Wesley's fighting them off. And all of a sudden, Rhea hits him in the head with her belt. Dom crawls over, pins him, one, two, three, and the entire audience was stunned. Stunned. <laughs> I look at Mandy, and I, she has her hands over her face, stunned. I had literally no words. I was speechless. Like, I literally couldn't say a word during this segment. That was behind, and apparently he got behind on the show, so he didn't see it live. So we're sitting there in dead silence, and they're <laughs> celebrating in the ring. You text me, like, did Dom win? And I couldn't say, I couldn't even respond to you. I was in such shock. I couldn't even respond. I looked like a picture of the screen. I know, I know exactly what my comment was. What the fuck? Yeah, so this happens. And we're both sitting there in dead style as the show goes off the air. <laughs> we didn't move. We were in stunned silence. Right, <laughs> right before the show went off. Um... Oh, no, let, me, let me finish. My story. Okay. I'll, I'll throw it to you. So, CJ's in his room playing a video game. He's not watching NXT with us. He has no idea what's going on. Mandy then calls him on the phone in the other room. Says, he's like, what? It's, it's, it's like 9 o'clock. And he's like, what? Um, Dominic Bashir is the North American champion. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, dad, that was, that was, so his dad apparently was on some kind of delay. So he did not realize what was going on. And he goes to the other room to finish watching the show. And Mandy went back in the room to watch his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw it to you. Because <laughs> you got a little later reaction than we did. I, wow. I, I I didn't I didn't expect it. Uh caught me off guard. And at the end the belt shot was botched because it did open up a um laceration. Yeah, Steve was bleeding when it was all yeah. and and <laughs> my, my thing is now this sets up a rematch for the bash. Oh it's happening at the bash. You know what's happening at the bash. Yeah. A, a triple threat match. You got to keep Mustafa Ali. He was in the title match. He was he earned a number of contendership match. It should be a triple threat at the match, or or he's going to be a special guest referee again. I don't know. Get that already. Now it was supposed to be West versus Mustafa. I'm going to guarantee now with the triple threat as Dom as champion. Apparently, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. I'm Sal. So I text you. What was your reaction when I told you Dom actually won? <laughs> Yay! Oh my oh, god! Reaction. I was very happy because you know he got all the hate in the world literally just for breathing. Not just imagine him with an NXT title on his shoulder. <laughs> oh God, he's going to be fucking relentless on Monday. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> People will still be booing him and he won't be able to get anything out. Oh my God, it's going to, it's going to be relentless um, on Monday. Holy shit. I can see Rhea being his mouthpiece. Again, but she always I, is. <laughs> but still, that, I, I, I'm still in disbelief, and it's the next day, and I'm still in disbelief. This morning, I literally went on, I was on this, in the, I was just, I woke up a little earlier than I planned, so I'm just going through my phone, going through messages on my phone, and I literally went on threads, I'm like, oh, that really did happen last night. <laughs> what did happen? <laughs> <laughs> Dominic, so you really did win the North American Championship. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing that happened. Um, the other title change that happened this week. Um, so when we last left you, um, before and before Sal metaphorically put his head through a window, um, Raquel and Lynn won the tag team belts from Ronda and Shayna, where Ronda turned on Shayna, told to be a heel, but the crowd refuses to cheer for Ronda, so now Shayna is the TP in this rivalry. <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense in the story they were telling. Oh, but okay. anyway. Well, you need, you need to catch up. Oh, we, I mean, we, it was the third hour. She did a promo. Shayna, cut the, Shayna and um, Ronda are having a match at SummerSlam. Um, Shayna beat Nikki Cross in like eight seconds. Um, and Ronda was sitting in a um, box upstairs and calls out and does this cocky ass promo. We're like, where has this Ronda been? Like, this is the Ronda we all wanted because she's being a cocky little bitch. And it was perfect for her character in the moment. But it makes no sense in the story they're telling. <laughs> the <fact laughs> why is Ronda being a heel? It made no sense, but the crowd was booing her. So you really can't go against that. Um, yes. So, anyway, so Raquel and Liv are champions. Well, Raquel is also in a feud with Rhea. Um, and Rhea jumped Raquel and Liv and, in, and injured Raquel's leg. So then we have a tag team title match where it's Raquel and Liv taking on um, Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green. 
Thank you, I know how much I enjoy it. Chelsea Green. Love that. I'm sorry. I think it's fun. Um, and um, now Sonny Deville and Chelsea Green are the tag team champions. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm mad upset about this. I think this is pretty damn cool. I think this is cool. Um, there was a picture brought up, I think, by Sonia of her and Chelsea from Tough Enough. Yes. They're in the same Tough Enough class. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, Sal, your thoughts? Um, yay! <laughs> There's like a trend here. <laughs> yes. Dad? I don't know really how to feel about it. Uh, I I kind of look at it as, for some reason now, these belts are like a hot potato. You put it on one team, and the next week it goes on another team. So... Well, it- so I don't have an issue with it with these belts. Hey, because what does it really matter at the end of the day? My my thing, if you're going to put the belts on a team, have it on for a little bit instead of playing ping pong with it. Um, uh, I think they're more focusing on Raquel being a single than rather being a tag team. And I think that's why it happened. Um. But let's see what happens with Sonia and Chelsea. See, you know, what, what comes next. I mean. Oh, my God. Would my, it, she start randomly thinking, like, everybody in her life when she won the belt. Like, she was just randomly thinking everybody. I think she said her bronzer. I think she said that. Yeah. Her her bronzer, her, yes. like, what the hell is going on with that really random? So, <laughs> so here, here's my thing. Now you got Sonia and Chelsea to have the belts. No love. Okay. Challenge damage control. How? Easy. E- EO is currently in a, a single feud, and right. Bailey might be injured. So, you you, you pick I'm on. The... I'm being dead serious. If Bailey's injured, but she might yeah. be, injured, and yeah. um, Dakota Kai is injured. Right, Dakota Kai is injured. Single feud. There's no tag team. I I there mean no team. <laughs> if 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 you want to be like the bullies and, and pick on Bailey and see what saying, but there's no tag team to challenge. Well. There is no tag team. I mean, I feel like Kane and Cardinal gets out a chance. Because that would actually make more sense because they're an actual team. <laughs> an actual team. I don't know if they'll go after him yet. I, I think they want to go with someone that's established. The only team that's left. <laughs> There's nobody else left. Unless you bring them down to NXT, or they're supposed to be doing. Then that's different. Because there's a bunch oh, of teams. Go. See. But like, yeah, I. <laughs> Yeah, I love that damage control. Uh, Bailey's probably hurt, and Dakota Kai is. Like, there's, there's no damage control right now. There is no damage control. <laughs> Trying to avoid talking about Bailey hurt injury, too. Trying to avoid that on the show. But apparently, that happened. So, apparently, Bailey may have injured her knee. She may not have injured her knee. We don't know. Because she was very coy about it on Instagram. On Instagram, So, we don't actually know if she's hurt or not. So, if she's on Raw this week, she's not hurt. If she's not on Raw this week, she's hurt. That's pretty much what's going on at this point. There you go. <laughs> Um, one last thing that we have to talk about because it's taking over the wrestling business literally, <laughs> literally taking over the business, <laughs> and it is one L A <laughs> night. Yeah, uh, I see what you mean there. <laughs> well, that's what they do in the crowd, that's what the crowd does now. Apparently, from what I'm hearing behind the scenes, apparently, it shows woos are being replaced with yes in the crowd. Yeah. Like, that's not a joke. That's actually happening now in the crowd. The rules are being replaced by Yaz. And, like, LA Knight is becoming a megastar legitimately in the background of this whole company. And uh, nobody saw this one coming. Uh, so I just had to bring it up here because I have a weird feeling that he's going to end up being... I'm, I'm putting him in the U.S. title match at SummerSlam now because if he doesn't win the title belt at this point, this crowd's going to be pissed. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, if he's in the Fatal 4-Way on Friday and he faces Santos next Friday and then the winner of that goes to SummerSlam. Um, the one thing I will say here is, um, I know, sorry, I don't watch SmackDown. Last week yeah. they did a um, four-way. They're, they're doing like a middle mini tournament for the US 10 number contendership match. And that's cool and all. They're doing two four-way matches and the winners face each other. And they did a four-way match last week and then they set up the promo. They literally did a whole promo package about the other four. Where they gave little right. pr- promos, it was like it was Rey Mysterio, Cameron Grimes. I don't remember the other person off the top of my head. 
But then these are all pre-packaged videos they put in on the screen. And all of a sudden, we go to the crowd. LA Knight comes out to cut a promo for the match on Friday. I'm like, and the crowd with the palm of his hands. I'm like, this is absolutely. Right. Yep. Like, I cannot believe what we're seeing. Um, Sal, any thoughts on this insanity with LA Knight? Um, I mean, I I know that there's a lot of people that say that he's taking from certain eras. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. His character now, but I mean, I remember even back in the day before WWE, and he was very entertaining, and um, I enjoyed watching him. So nothing is really new. It's just I drink turned up to a it, to an eleven. Drake, you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. He was Eli Drake at the Eli time. Drake. So, but no, I I'm I'm loving this for him. And by the way, for those saying, and I always want to address this too. He's too old for this push. He is my age. <laughs> he is my age. Damien Priest is older than me. <laughs> Damien Priest is 44. LA Knight is, look, I think he's 40. Actually. He's not even 41. He's 40. And it was prime. I'm sorry, but it's people that are saying, remember how old Chris Jericho and Sting are. And they look fantastic in the room. Jericho, not so much, but Sting looks good in the ring. Like, I, I give credit where it's, I, I love to give you shit about Sting now, but I know how good Sting looks in the ring when he does. You know what I mean? Like, he looks a lot better than Jericho most of the damn time. Um, oh. But, no, I, I gotta give credit where it's due. This is gonna be great, and I can't wait for this to be a bigger deal than people who realize. <laughs> um, one other thing I will say here, we are doing the show on Wednesday, so obviously we're not talking about Blood and Guts because it hasn't happened yet. I am wearing my Golden Elite t-shirt. Broke it out for the show. For those who are on the YouTube side wondering where the shirt came from, this is my old Golden Elite t-shirt. Um, I will say, though, because this is one of those re- rare weeks that Sal wasn't watching Dynamite Live, so I didn't get to get your opinion to me. What were your thoughts on how they announced Pac and Kota Bushi for, for Bud and Guts? That's odd. <laughs> it feels forced. I don't know. It's just so weird. It's just so random. See, I like the fact that pack at least makes sense because they had that feud with Omega. So that at least makes yeah. sense. They had the pack with the Elite and all that kind of stuff. But the way that they announced Kota Ibushi was the most elite way I've ever seen doing something. Because literally Max asked for his last, asked for Omega's last rights. Last rights before topping his head off of the chair. He's like, look at the screen. <laughs> so I'm like, what the hell are we doing? So weird. So I just had to make sure I, I noted that because it's Friday and that's already happened. We're not talking about it because it hasn't happened in our personal timeline yet. Anything anyone else wants to bring up before we wrap up? Um, no. Oh, no. how about the fact that we're not going to have a NFL logo at the 50 yard line at MetLife Stadium anymore? Yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing that's happening. <laughs> Like why now after all these years of <laughs> I have no idea. Um I have no idea. Honestly, I have zero clue. Topic of discussion. Did you guys hear about the uh increase in Peacock Premium Plus? Yes, we I did hear about that. I'm not surprised about that. Everything okay. else is going up, so like why am I not surprised? I mean um I like to pay for it, Dad. We do. Uh okay. I mean, do you think it was expected because yeah, of uh, Disney Plus okay. went up, um, Netflix went up, um, Max yeah. went up when they rebranded, like everything went up. So I'm not really surprised. So, here's here's a, something to think about because of the writer strike and the screen actors strike. Do you think though there'll be more people subscribing to streaming services? Actually, I think it'll be less. I think it's gonna be less. Be honest with you. I mean, people are gonna like turn to an alternative because I think they don't want to see any reruns or. Well, the problem is when you like, for instance, what's going on right now on Max? I don't watch Max. You do. Outside of maybe the animated shows that you love so much. Yep. What is going on on Max that people care about? Succession's over. There's no Game of Thrones. There's no um. What the hell? The other show that was on there for a while. Um. Like, there's nothing going on on Max right now that matters except for what reruns of the Bang Bang Theory. You can watch the TBS every day. They have um, bringing in things like Robert Downey's dream cars where he finds his dream cars and they... Again, it's not like something people yeah. would actually watch, though. 
That's, the That's not something people would actually watch. Like, there are more people probably going out of their way to watch fucking, um, what the hell is that show that comes on in, after NXT? The, um, not NXT on Wednesdays, they advertise during NXT. The, uh, oh, you mean, um, Temptation Island? Island. Where people probably go out of their way to watch Temptation Island and the Big D because they're sex oriented than they would oh. to watch on uh, Robbie Down Jr.'s cars. Like, let's just be honest here. Well, then like, I. I... I saw yep. that Disney Plus <laughs> is releasing stuff for like ABC to put on like uh, Ms. Marvel. Yeah, but here's the difference with um, Disney Plus. They currently have in the um, with a Secret Invasion going on right now. Yeah. And more importantly, Ahsoka's coming on soon. I think mm-hmm. more because I've been looking, I'm looking forward to something like this in a long time. Um, that show is going to bring in. I, I don't think people are alive with Ahsoka. I know, Sal, you're not a big Star Wars person, so you don't really understand, but. Yeah. Ahsoka is this show is pretty much going to be a continuation of Rebels, which is the animated show that came out a few years back. It's literally mm-hmm. going to be a live action continuation. And the minute I said that to Christian, he was interested in watching it with me. And he doesn't yeah. watch the Star Wars shows. No. So this is going to be a bigger show than I think people realize because of that audience of the younger kids that watch Rebels. They're like, oh shit, we're getting a continuation of that show? Really? That was a great show. So, like, that's another big deal here. So, like, they have Ahsoka coming up. And also, they're getting like Peacock got freaking through Mario Brothers. Who saw that one coming? I didn't expect yeah. that Brothers. So that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So like maybe that's another reason. Maybe they're getting bigger movies, which is why they're raising their prices. Yeah, they're getting massive movies. And I think it, it's Stars that's getting John Wick Four. I guess I don't know. I, don't, I haven't watched Stars since we stopped getting it. <laughs> Even when we did have it, I barely watched it. But like, I don't. Is there's too many streaming services as it is right now. Like I said earlier, I dropped Honor Club because of the G1. Because mm-hmm. why am I why are we subscribe to Honor Club and nobody watches the weekly show? They're not doing pay-per-views over there. And the G1's going on and it's a lot cheaper. Come on, who's the pan world? There you go. What's what's the point? So no, I it's a, maybe it's just the content. Maybe they're trying to get more content over there, and they need the money to do it. To, like, get, it's like Super Mario Brothers. Number two, the Plus is going to have Garden Galaxy three this week. They get they have Little Mermaid, which a lot of people want to watch. Yeah, but, like they're getting bigger movies already coming soon this summer. Like I remember Sal who was back yeah. said that, that Disney Plus isn't having anything new, and they I think they woke up to people saying that, and they're adding a lot yeah. of new content. Yeah, uh-huh. I noticed that with Disney Plus. Like, I, I'm just I'm like, hoping that the uh... The strike gets resolved, and that it oh, is correct. good for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, today, and even if it does, even when it does, it's going to take a while to get things in motion, too. Oh yeah, definitely. I Everything's mean, not going to happen overnight. Exactly. I mean, you know, the the domino effect has happened, and, and uh, studios that have utilized things like uh, for sound equipment and lighting equipment. They're they're being affected by this, and and you know, the domino effect has happened. I, Frick, that's I'm, all of a strike. I think yeah, it's, you know the Emmy Awards nominations came out, and all of a sudden, and then said after went on strike. And I'm like, what, at the Emmy, the Emmys aren't going to happen. Emmys are not happening. Like I hate to tell people that the Emmys aren't happening this year. Oh. But I said, I'd love for it to happen because Ted Lasso is going to win all the awards. They're not happening this year because and... like the Tony Awards, they don't have to happen. The Emmy Awards don't have to happen. Yeah, difference. I got, remember I talked about this for the Tony Awards. The Tony Awards had to happen. The Emmys don't have to happen. Mm-hmm. So, all right. I think we have we have gone long today. Let's actually wrap up here. Okay, What's, do we? So, what are we closing with? Uh, this is the very very popular number one remake from Luke Combs, his version of Fast Car. Yeah, I like this a lot, actually. I really like this a lot. Um, I, I stored all over the charts. I'm like, really? They, they, they redid they they had they covered fast car? Like I was being surprised, but I stored all over the charts. Yeah. So from what I've read, and I don't remember this obviously, the original version, the Tracy Chapman version, never hit number one. So this is actually the first time this song is hitting number one on the charts. And secondly, which is what I texted you. Uh, Tracy Chapman now is the first solo black female songwriter to have a number one country song. Which is really awesome. There you go. That's a cool accomplishment. It's a really cool accomplishment. All right, so what's going on here, Sal? Go for it. Uh, For more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media, 
or watch the show uh, on YouTube, uh, TikTok, and spell words wrong when you're making trying to make fun of us. Uh, uh, go to the Blake of Show.com. Don't forget to comment uh, or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show and make fun of you. Um, Dad, say your thing. Hey, don't forget about threads. Uh, as always, it's been your pleasure. <laughs> and uh, hey, if you happen to have a local wrestling independent organization where you live, please go patronize these people. These are young men and women coming up in the world of professional wrestling sports entertainment. They want to entertain you. You'll be amazed on what they can do, their moves, their finishers, their gimmicks, their characters. They want to get to that brass ring that it's in a major wrestling company, and they want to do it by basically getting you to come to their shows. But do it safely. Act like an adult. Treat each other with respect. Things will go a lot better, and the world will be a better place. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. I didn't expect that to be said here. Um, next week, like I said earlier, we're going to be previewing NXT Great American Bash, and we'll see what they have in store for us. Because I, now that Dom's the champion, they had to change some stuff up here. So it's going to be interesting what they do on next week's on, on the New American Bash. That being said, let's get out of here. I'm like, yeah. I'm Sal. I'm Mark. And you're listening to the Blake and Sal show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, we love you guys. And when you post something, spell check it, please. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Had a feeling I could be someone, be someone, be someone. You got a fast car. I got a job that pays all I'm fit to stay out drinking late at the bar, sing more of your friends than you do your kids. I always hope for better. Thought maybe together you and me find it. I got no plans. I ain't going nowhere. Take your fast car and keep on driving. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. And good night. Bye-bye, bitch. <laughs>